and its players are focused on a potential return as early as May. So how will this work? Well, games would be played in Arizona at various ballparks without fans. And the league also issued a statement this morning that they have considered several plans but have not decided on anything yet. So Shannon, I start with you. In your opinion, how realistic is this that we could have baseball to watch as early as May? I hope um, it's a logistical nightmare because basically you have 25 major league teams, Skip, and you're trying to get them all into to one locale. You're asking an awful lot, Skip. We talked about this at the opening of the show, the testing. Now, if I'm not mistaken, my math could be a little, I, I wasn't very good at math. If you have 25 major league baseball teams and you're talking about 30 players per team, that's what, seven, 700, 750, give or take, players that's got to get tested, not managers, not training staff or anything else other than that. And then I guess, Skip, what, they, what they're saying is that if we test you once, we keep everybody in isolation, we should be good. But Skip, what's the likelihood of 750 people, nobody going out to get a bite to eat, nobody going to get a drink, you're gonna have to go to the grocery store, you're gonna have to, you're gonna do something. So you're gonna come in contact with someone else other than the people that have been tested and have been given a, 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 a a, non a non positive test. Skip, I want this to happen so bad, Skip, because look, I'm, I love the news and I try to read stay on it, but Skip, I want to see, I want to see sports. I want to see football, basketball. I want to see something that's not. Skip, I've seen everything. How many times can I watch the '87 the NBA Finals or can I watch the Super Bowl Fifty, Super Bowl Forty Eight? Skip, I, I, I want to see, I want to see something that's happening right now in 2020. And I, I know that's being selfish. I know that the pandemic going on right now is more important. But I, I, I'm hoping that the officials can get this under control and we can get some resemblance of normalcy. Not that we're going to be normal, but some resemblance of normalcy. That's what I really want. I hope MLB can pull this off, that the, uh, uh, the uh, baseball and the Players Association can come to some kind of agreement of how this thing is going to work out. And so I can start watching baseball. I've never been so excited to get this kind of news about baseball, but I'm excited about the potential of this possibly happening. Mm. And so am I. I cannot watch a replay of game six of the 2013 <laughs> NBA Finals again because I've died a thousand Why deaths not? just watching that. So please help us, Major League Baseball, give us that ray of light, that ray of hope, that first small step back toward normalcy. And the best news that I've heard or read is that federal public health officials have backed this plan, have endorsed it, have basically blessed it to both MLB and the Major League Baseball Players Association they're on board. They think it has a chance. Obviously, Shannon, as you point out, a, a, a thousand hurdles to get over. But baseball is the one mm -hmm. game that lends itself to social distancing because the fielders are obviously mm -hmm. fairly spread out. The, the, there's the batter's box next to the catcher, but maybe the catcher could wear a mask. Maybe the fielders could wear masks when they come in contact with the base runner occasionally. But in general, if the stands are empty, the players won't sit next to each other in the dugout. They will spread out in the stands when they're not up to bat. I mean, when I'm sorry, when they are up to bat, when they're not out in the field. And there'll be no more mound visits. I don't think there'll be any clubhouse situation where you dress and shower in the clubhouse. I think that will always all be done back at the hotel. You will put on your uniform in your room in isolation at the hotel. You will have to take individual rides to the ballpark. But Phoenix is a great place to try this because Phoenix is, of the metro areas, one of the least hardest hit. And Shannon, there's also a chance if they're going to play in 105 degree, 110 or 12 degree temperatures <laughs> in the summer in Phoenix, that maybe they're not mm -hmm. sure yet. Maybe the virus doesn't survive as well in that kind of extreme heat. We don't know that for sure yet. 
but mm-hmm. maybe. And, and so Phoenix so far has been one of the least hardest hit metro areas. So maybe baseball right. can, can get back on the field and more important, back on television because we all need our great escape that is sports. This leads to, okay, NBA, how about you? Well, Commissioner Silver said yesterday he's waiting until May 1st to make his sort of next big decision. But uh, Woj at ESPN reported that Labor Day is their drop dead, so to speak. I hate to use that word in this, these days and ages, but that, that they're looking at Labor Day as their cutoff date for completing their playoffs if, in fact, they can complete them. So, again, basketball has the issue, of course, of less attire, you know, just shorts and and singlet tops. So there's more contact Mm -hmm. with sort of sweaty skin and there's more chances to communicate the virus. So they have more issues than baseball would have to get back on the court. But they've been talking about doing this sort of biodome idea, this isolation idea, a bubble in Las Vegas. And maybe with the help of baseball leading the way, Maybe Commissioner Silver can figure out some ways they can get the NBA back on the court in time for a little bit of regular season and maybe abbreviated playoffs through the summertime. So, again, this is the first happy note that we've heard since March 11th, the night Rudy Gobert tested positive and all of our lives changed maybe forever. Yeah. Yeah. But Skip, my, my thing is, is that you look at baseball, this says, okay, we can put teams in, uh, and I guess spring training, you have Tucson, you have Scottsdale, you have Phoenix. So you, you mentioned there are 10, 11, 12 different locales. How many different yes. locales are there in Vegas? Uh, you got UNLV. Uh, I mean, how many, because you can only play, uh, uh, I, mean, how many, I mean, how many facilities are you going to be able to play? So you got you to gotta be looking to play, Skip, three, four games a night at least. If you got all these, do you have three or four or five facilities that you can play? You know, obviously you can probably put somebody. I mean, I guess you could turn some of the uh, ballrooms where they hold fights at. They used to hold fights at Caesar's Palace or, or uh, the MGM or, you know, I guess you could have to use some of the casinos, Skip. You don't have that many. Facilities. It's not like because no, spring can't. training, as you mentioned, is in Arizona. So they have facilities that's MLB yeah. compatible. They don't have a whole bunch of uh, facilities there like that in Vegas for NBA. No. I still think they can figure this all out. And I think this is our first point of re-entry into the way things kind of used to be. So I'm excited about mm-hmm. it. Okay. I think it's a glimmer of hope, and that's what we have to leave it with. Because if the players are on board, the league is going to do everything in their power to do it well, to do it safely, and we'll wait and see. Uh, we got to talk about Antonio Brown, guys. Did he just get closer to getting back on the field? 